So what happens when things go wrong? So this would be genetic mutations. So if the enzyme that converts tyrosine to melanin is defective, no melanin is produced and the, rege the re genetic results are known as albinism. So a peacock with albinism does not produce the melanin needed to make the bright colors of its feathers. Fun fact, my family farm has peacocks and we used to have a white peacock. It was a girl, so it didn't have the fun spreaded feathers, but we do have male indigo blues, which have the beautiful feathers. Okay. So what are mutations? Well, a mutation or a change in the nucleotide sequence of DNA may alter the sequence of amino acids. It may affect the structure and function of the protein in a cell. And mutations can result from x-rays, an overexposure to the sun, such as ultraviolet light or UV light um, or sunlight, or which would be those, all of those combined, right? And then chemicals that are called mut mutagens and then some viruses. What are mutagens? If a mutation occurs in a somatic cell, and this is a cell that's other than a reproductive cell, that's the definition of a somatic cell, then the altered DNA will be limited to that cell and its daughter cells, just the ones that it, it specifically reproduces into. Where if a mutation causes uncontrolled growth, then cancer could occur, okay? And that's no bueno. And if a mutation occurs in a germ cell, which would either be our egg or our sperm, then the DNA produced in the new individual will contain the same genetic change and it will be passed on to all future offspring. A substitution or a point mutation of, is the replacement of one base in the template strand of DNA with another. If a substitution or point mutation changes the nucleotide, a different amino acid may be inserted into that polypeptide. And if this produces no change in the amino acid sequence, it's called a silent mutation where a frame shift mutation is the insertion or a deletion of a single nucleotide into this sequence resulting in a change due to the subsequent codons leading to a new amino acid sequence. So point mutations, I say it's one point that's being changed, okay? And so we're changing one letter. And if it does not change the amino acid, then that's a silent mutation. I kind of say, pretend my husband likes sweet coffee and one day I sweeten it with Splenda instead of sugar. The result's going to be the same, sweet coffee, and he's never going to know. So it's like, hmm, shh, don't tell anyone, okay? It's silent. A missense mutation is like, <laughs> whoopsie, I made a mistake, okay? So I changed one letter, and it ends up changing the amino acid. So we made a mistake, and we changed the whole amino acid. And then there's a nonsense codon. And this means that you change one letter, and it ends up changing it into a stop codon. So it's like, kids, <laughs> stop your nonsense, right? So those are all point mutations. Where frame shift mutations, I say, if you take pictures through your camera, okay, and you say, okay, well, Uncle Bob brought his girlfriend to the family reunion, we're going to, you know, insert her into this picture, okay, then we're going to be a frame shift insertion, where if, you know, Uncle Sally's boyfriend, I don't know, whatever, got sick and left, then you're going to delete him from that picture. So it's either a frame shift insertion, which makes it one, you know, you have to shift everything over to the spot, one spot to the right to make room for it, or a frame shift deletion where you're deleting one. Okay, and that might be a little bit deeper than what you need to know, but if it ever comes up now, you know, your fun stories. So the normal DNA sequence produces a messenger RNA that provides instructions for the correct series of amino acids in a protein. So you have your template strand, it undergoes transcription to the messenger RNA, then it undergoes translation, changes language into the actual amino acid sequence. Where a substitution of a DNA in, uh, of a base in a DNA can change that codon in the messenger RNA, therefore leading to a placement of an incorrect amino acid in that polypeptide. Okay, so you can see that we substituted one base is going to end up changing that amino acid and potentially the whole entire protein. Where the deletion is going to be like we're deleting out of that frame, that camera frame, right? And this changes the mRNA codons that follow the sequence because it's going to pop this guy out and then everyone has to move over one spot to the left to make room for it. And it's going to change the sequence significantly. So what's the effect of this? Well, when a mutation causes a change in the amino acid sequence, the structure of the resulting protein may be severely altered, causing the loss of its biologic activity. When this condition is hereditary, because it's passed on from generation to generation, this is called a genetic disease. So 
In DNA, we can have x-rays, UV sunlight, mutagens, and viruses that can alter the DNA to make a defective protein. And when that's passed on then to the germ cells, then that's going to be your genetic diseases, where if it's just on the somatic or body cells, then that can form, for instance, cancer. A genetic disease is a result um, from a defective enzyme that is caused by a mutation in its genetic code. For example, PKU, okay, phenylketonuria, this results from DNA that cannot direct or synthesize the, um, or make, I'm sorry, can't direct or make the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. And that phenylalanine hydroxylase, if we go back to what we talked about with enzymes, it's required for the conversion of phenylalanine to the product tyrosine. And another example is, or continuing on with this, that albinism is going to result when the enzyme that converts the tyrosine to melanin, melanin is defective. So going back to our white peacock or albino, um, other animals and people. So here is a table of some common genetic diseases and why they arise. So this is pretty interesting. Check it out in your book. It's table 17.8. All right, last two slides, guys. So study check. Identify each of the mutations as a substitution or a frame shift, okay? So remember substitution, we're just changing one letter where frame shift, we're either inserting or deleting. Pause me and come back. Okay. So cytosine enters the DNA sequence. We're putting a new letter in. So that's going to be a frame shift insertion. When one adosine is removed from the DNA sequence, we're deleting one letter. So that'd be a frame shift deletion. Where when a base sequence TGA in DNA changes to TAA, we're going to change that G to an A and that is going to be a substitution. All right, great job, you guys.